Hello, good morning, good afternoon, welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Raphael Schmidt. Raphael, as many of you would know, is the head of business development at Hydrogenius. Hydrogenius is, is obviously synonymous with, with LOHC, liquid organic hydrogen carrier. So uh, a, a fast moving, fast growing um, subsector of hydrogen uh, in terms of a, a sort of derivative or a, or a system to, to, to move hydrogen around. Um, so, so welcome, Raphael. Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah. So you're obviously a, a, a sponsor. You've been a, a long time supporter of the, of the work that we do, and you'll be sponsoring a World Hydrogen Week, where we have a lot of discussions around around the derivatives area. Um, LOHC obviously has a, a number of advantages over over the other um, transport mediums. Maybe you could you give us an introduction to, to Hydrogenius and maybe a, a catch up on, on some of the activities um, that, that have been happening there over the past few months. Obviously, been been a very busy time. Yeah. Perfect, happy to do so. And uh, I mean, you perfectly uh, nailed down uh, on what we are doing where we are. So we are a fast growing uh, company, um, you could say mid-sized company in, in Germany based in Erlangen, Bavaria. Um, and we are working on the LHC technology, which is um, the, the carrier technology. Um, we do so since over 10 years now, um, and we are heading toward 300 employees by the end of the year. So very uh, even in this year we had 100 to 150 employees which we employed so here we grow we're in the middle of the next uh, funding race we have very strong and good investors uh, behind us um, large names mitsubishi hyundai um, chevron um, covestro temasek so jera just to name some of them so very good support by by large companies to implement our visions and we are currently in the schedule of our technology uh, where we are implementing the first industrial pilots. The, the one in Germany is um, in construction by the end of the year. So basically in permitting stage right now. And then we are uh, scaling up uh, on the important projects of common European interest. That's one um, or two projects we have there uh, to, to scale up the technology and to implement the Seaborne uh, project. And then we will go towards um, the 500 uh, tons per day. So the very large scale plants um, where we have activities in the Middle East and the US, and uh, where we see the hydrogen sourcing um, and, and the, the very low hydrogen cost and good environment to produce hydrogen, um, to import it towards the import markets like um, the, the Asian markets or Europe. So that's what we're currently doing. And these very large um, projects and, and plans, we intend to be implementing them by the end of the decade. So 20, 20, uh, 2030. Um, is the goal for for getting these very large commercial projects uh, on the road? Yeah, and LOHC for, for people maybe not familiar with the technology is, is advantages around um, you know it, it, I guess it renders hydrogen as oil and, and enables a much more efficient um, transport of energy across across regions. Um, and specifically, obviously, you know, capturing the hydrogen once you arrive at the destination, you 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 um, do a hydrogenation project with fairly low heat to, to, to uncrack the, the hydrogen is that right yeah yeah definitely i mean the the advantages of the technology is that it's basically we, we attach the hydrogen to a carrier liquid which is an oil so before and after it's an oil and you can handle it in the existing infrastructure um, which has a lot of advantages because it's already there at significant scale um it's uh the, the carrier liquid itself is hardly flammable non-explosive non-toxic so it's very easy uh, to handle uh, and so I would always say we were taming the beast as hydrogen is a very light molecule, difficult to transport. Um, uh, and, and LOC is enabling these transport at um, large and mid-sized scale. And the advantages of LOC is then leveraging on the existing infrastructure that you could do these um, very large transport routes, of course, from the, the production centers to the demand centers, uh, globally speaking. But you can also do um, the, the last mile transport. Uh, so you could change, for example, you can land in Rotterdam, then you could go to a barge, um, you could do inland tripping, you could go to a, to a train, um, transported by train, existing rail cars. So everything is already there and every, all the transport routes are, um, we can leverage on. And then you end with uh, our release system, we, we call it, it's a dehydrogenation process where we need heat. Um, like you said, it's one of the downsides of our technology to, to be quite open. Um, but it's heat at around 300 degrees Celsius. So it's temperature levels which are available in the industry. And therefore, one of our focal points is um, to, of course, um, cover, uh, to go very close to the off-taker. Um, 
course, also serve the ports and this very large release facilities in the hydrogen backbone, but also go closer to the offtaker and then do the most uh, sensible heat integration with the offtaker using maybe even uh, heat which is available at the offtaker um, and therefore reducing the overall efficient or increasing the efficiency and uh, reducing the overall costs and of course also the CO2 footprint. Yeah, yeah, that's it. it's interesting to see you extending into into modal into modal system and and, and seeing it um, taking the LHC right through to to the end customer. And I remember um, from previous discussions that the the return path, um, I guess, economics, are, I guess, are, are maybe an improvement on the existing energy system where we obviously have empty oil tankers going back predominantly to the Middle East, obviously, under the current system. Um, but with LOHC, they could be going back and they actually need that, that base oil in terms of the, the, the actual shipping um, and, and the efficiency of, of taking the oil tankers back. So very much viewing the LOHC as maybe as, as part of the ship, as it were. Yeah, exactly. But like I said, I mean, that's the question we often been asked. Uh, do you also calculate the, the cost of transport back? Um, and, and like you said, it's an existing energy infrastructure. You have the same thing. So you're, you have demand centers, you have production centers, and you send energy from the production centers to the demand centers, and then the transport mode goes back. Uh, it's the same with ammonia. It's the same with um, uh, oil. Um, and uh, of course, that's necessary on our terms. So we need to get the carrier liquid back. But on the other side, I always, always say that it's um, a truly sustainable cycle. So we are just hydrogen to hydrogen and the carrier molecule is not depleted. It's not gassing out, it's not burned or anything like this, it's not cracked. Um, it basically goes back uh, and the hydrogen is being added again. And so you just have hydrogen to hydrogen um, without any additional emissions or anything like this. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, yeah, the, the advantages, I guess, over ammonia, clearly the toxicity issue, and, and, and I guess also over methanol is, is the issue with methanol is where, where does the carbon come from? So with your solution, it, it, it ticks those boxes. Um, you, you mentioned um, uh, Europe and, and, and obviously you're, you're from Europe and a lot of interest in terms of replacing the, the importation of energy and biohydrogen in, into Europe and also America, which obviously is, a, is an export a nation in terms of, of energy. Um, but I was interested to just to pick up on some of your investors. There, there seems to be an you know, impressive roster of, of people across across the board. Temasek, obviously, is Singapore Sovereign Wealth Fund or, or um, investor. Um, uh, so, so Asia, I guess, would, would also be of interest for, for, for those those types of companies that have invested in you, so Hyundai, Mitsubishi, etc. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, of course, they they are all strategic investors, so they all have, um, let's say, a certain interest to support us and to bring our company further and our technology. Um, so, of course, also the investors based in the uh, Asian region. Uh, they want to leverage on their network and their activities in the Asian region. So uh, we are on, on the stepping stone of that. So we are trying to also approach um, uh, different activities in, in the region. But to be also quite open and honest, um, it is a difficult region. So to enter as a European company um, is, is quite difficult, even with support by investors, because it's very, very close markets, markets that are functioning completely different than, than in Europe. So we are carefully approaching these markets, but we do so with the support of our investors. Uh, and we see that um, Japan, uh, South Korea, Singapore, they are, besides Europe, another identified demand center where you don't have the abilities to produce all the hydrogen which you need to decarbonize the industry. Um, so therefore, uh, a very attractive region also to land with these transport vectors and, and to, to bring hydrogen to the end customer. And again, clearly, yeah, you, there's, I guess the, the, the Europe is, is, a, is a major um, market or one that's, that's ahead of some of those other markets from, from what you're saying. And in terms of the, the, the industry and, and how the industry is developing, you're obviously involved in a lot of projects. Um, what, what, what is your take around the, the, the state of the projects and then specifically um, the policy and finance environment? Are we, are we almost there in terms of being able to get some of these projects across final investment decision? And what, 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 what is your sense around it as, as we're developing the, the industry and um, the, some of the projects that you're involved in? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question because it gets broader, it goes beyond what we actually uh, just, just do. Um, and, and I would say that we are, um, I mean, with, with all the funding schemes and all the activities, we are approaching larger projects right now. Um, 
but we're not quite yet there where everyone wants to be. Uh, so the the gigawatt projects are, um, you could say, are being announced, but um, in my point of view, already or still far away. So we see at Hydrogenius that um, let's say beyond 100 megawatt uh, production on electrolysis side um, is feasible by the end of the decade, so 2030. And we're also aiming with our technology on having the large scale commercial systems ready by, by that uh, time. And um, right now, I think the next four or five years, we are engaging um, projects up to 100 megawatt and everything which is beyond at least has to be questions in my point of view, if it's realistic, if it's feasible, also adding capacities, production capacities for electrolysis, for example. Um, so I, I would say by the end of the decade, we are at where we want to be, or at least I hope so. Yeah, some some same words there and some some interesting um, reflections. So um, so yeah, certainly it's only in agreement with you in terms of that, that those kind of time scales. And, and there's obviously some heavy lifting to be done. There's, there's still technology to develop. There's there's still a lot of um, yeah new technology being broken as 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 your as your um as your technology is is indeed. Um, so yeah, it's been great to talk to you again, Raphael. Great to catch up. Thanks a lot for for your support. We look forward to seeing um, the further development of, of Hydrogenius as, as, as you build uh, more and more um, capacity, more and more finance, more and more projects, and, and obviously more and more people. So uh, many thanks, Raphael. We look forward to, to hearing more uh, and speaking with your colleagues at the World Hydrogen Week. Um, so that's uh, October the 9th to 13th in Rotterdam. Perfect. And thank you, Nadim. And like I said, I'm, I'm a big fan of your conferences. I, I think they're very high value to the industry. And that's also why we are supporting um, the, the conferences very much from our side. And I'm very much looking forward to the conference and to meet you there and to meet everyone um, at the conference. Excellent. Many thanks, Raphael. Thanks a lot for your, for your kind words and, and ongoing support. Cheers. Take care. Perfect. Thank you very much. Take care.